let's look at silver. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Okay, so we find silver here under real money. Here is silver as uh, some, uh, you know, it is actually it is actually outperforming gold uh, as far as the 52 week low goes, but not uh, the 52 week uh, highs. Let's first look a bit at the seasonality of silver. So these are the months in which um, the percentage of months in which SLV closed higher than it opened from you know this period to the end. You can see that July is a particularly strong month. Uh, February also strong, but July is obviously more relevant to us now. Let's uh, go a bit forward. Here again, between this period, July is a strong month. Very interesting. And here, again, July is a characteristically strong month for silver. We are currently in the later part of May. Hence, um, this is interesting. Okay, so that is supportive of a bullish thesis. We are looking at the SLV ETF, the iShares Silver Trust, by the way. Okay, let's do some analysis. Uh, let's go to um, strategy, uh, strategies, let's look at relative strength. Let's get, um, let's get the CSLV here, the Silver ETF. Here you can see it compared against the S&P 500, the mid caps and the small caps. And um, looking at the percentages here, you can see that uh, throughout this period, silver has been outperforming them all. If you do look further back, getting into the weeklies, then you can see that uh, silver has been underperforming. However, as of late, uh, there's been a change. Uh, let's do some further analysis. Let's look at some trend analysis. Okay, so the interesting thing about silver is that we have recently had this very aggressive move of the lows. Here you can see, we've had a solid breakout. The ch challenge is that we are getting, in, getting into a zone in which there have been many, many battles before. And um, yeah, it's, it, it, it is going to need a, a significant uh, catalyst to make this uh, push. If we go even further back, let's look at the weeklies. You can see that uh, silver was in a huge uh, bull market uh, from the financial crisis to this high here in 2011, then a massive bear market. And that, you know, so from that from that perspective, it is easier to argue in favor of bullish cases for silver than bearish because the bears have already had a massive uh, massive uh, fill. Let's do some uh, other types of analysis. Let's look at uh, momentum. That's also quite relevant. Uh, the issue for silver, given that we are pushing into this zone, is that we do have the RSI being a bit extended. We are pushing up into the upper part of the Bollinger Bands and that means that when you do have people with a massive gain, okay? So think about the psychology of the traders, okay? They are sitting on gains and now we are heading into a very treacherous territory with uh, a lot of fuel already being spent and you can see that the the RSI is lower here than here, meaning there is a negative, there's a bearish divergence between RSI and price action. What would be in Silver's interest uh, is to preferably maybe consolidate a bit sideways to you know, cool down a bit and then make that push above this, these levels. That would be very prudent. Let's look at some uh, money flow. Okay, so let's uh, get back. So here you can see the Chalkin money flow. It's, there's been some deterioration here. Looking at the accumulation distribution line, you can see that there is a, there is a bearish divergence between the AD line and price action. Which is, um, it is, it is, it is not like, you know, a 
huge problem, but it, it, it is an issue, and that is why I think it, it would be better to just consolidate consolidate a bit now uh, instead of making instead of trying to make that major push above here. But of course, um, it is very. But um, yeah, the, because the big problem is that if we do make a very aggressive push now, there is a higher risk that we are going to fail, and that would not be ideal. Now uh, let's do some comparison of um, gold versus silver to look at you know, the gold-silver ratio. Okay, so let's look at the weeklies. Okay, so these indicators here did ignore them. Uh, let's focus here on this. Um, let's actually do some area chart like that. Okay, so the way to read this is that when when this when when price here is going up, it means that gold is strengthening vis-a-vis -vis silver. So you can see that gold has definitively been leading throughout this entire period, excepting excepting this more recent move, which is uh, very, very uh, interesting. You can see here that silver, well, well, gold has weakened against silver, meaning silver has become uh, much stronger, outperforming uh, gold. So that's interesting. Uh, it is important to bear in mind that um, gold had this very massive move and silver is sort of like fighting back, but this is basic, at this point it is mean reversion. Still, Looking at the big picture, the overall trend is uh, in favor of gold versus uh, silver. The reason why many are attracted to silver and prefer it at least uh, physical silver instead of physical gold is because of the huge price difference. Let's get into a quick segment about uh, a type of investment many people do not think about, and that is collectibles. Uh, the things that uh, many types of collectibles have significantly outperformed the S&P 500. Collectibles and luxury goods they they fall in they fall in value during a global recession. Hence, it's uh, during during these times that it is very prudent to think about various kinds of uh, you know, collectibles and luxury products because you are more likely to get them at a bargain. When it comes to these kinds of products, we are talking about action figures, albums, watches, artworks, anything that is uh, rare um, can be very, very valuable. Uh, though, there is a big but, there is a lot of research needed to get into this space. Tokens have um, had a major uh, impact on this entire space. Uh, they are part of the blockchain revolution. And they, ba they basically enable you to have fractional ownership uh, in these kinds of products. Like luxury cars, mansions, artworks, because as an example, an artwork from, you know, Picasso uh, is very expensive. Uh, very, very expensive. But it is easier to invest if you can do it through tokens. And that makes it uh, more practical to diversify your collectible slash luxury investments. Here is the SLV. You can see that, that the expense ratio is um, okay. Eight billion dollars assets under management. Deep uh, liquidity. Uh, this uh, ETF is highly uh, optionable. You know, option strategies can be used. That's very beneficial. So that's basically my take on on silver. I am uh, I am bullish on silver. Uh, I think the major issue, though, is that um, we have gone very far in a short amount of time, and you know the RSI it is um, it is a bit uh, it it is it's it is a bit stretched, and we are getting into a very treacherous territory. Let's now look a bit at the S and P five hundred. So here is uh, the S&P. As far as the RSI goes, uh, there's no issue there. You can see that we are pulling back a bit um, today, but uh, nothing dramatic. If we get the moving averages here on the trend analysis, then you can see that um, you know 
this is um, the um, 200 day moving average and we are clearly above it if we do pull back further then it is it is very important for the bulls for there to be a rally on the 200 day moving average because if we do slip below it uh, then it could be interpreted as this being a fake uh, breakout which uh, would be an issue but if you look at you know indicators like Aaron it is okay um, though uh, there's been a bit of uh, a move here you can see on this red line and that uh, it could potentially become an issue but so far the bulls are quite clearly in uh, in control the big but of course is that um, this in entire rally is the result of uh, central banks uh, very aggressively supporting the market. Due to this uh, recovery, the central banks are certainly going to scale back their intervention because you know they, they can't just pour eternal uh, infinite, infinite money into the market. That is something that market might be upset about. So, 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 so that is uh, a risk factor for the bulls. But currently, as far as selecting the trend to be your friend, it looks uh, it looks bullish for silver. Though there is some uh, some territory we are getting into that is more treacherous. And as far as uh, the S&P goes, uh, the bulls are in charge. But uh, we are in very crazy times in which it is very important to let the trend be your friend and be diversified. 